I'm not even gonna read what Sevi wrote. But anyway, uh, Op4 getting a long position here to defend. Um, so this is a wave defense uh, with terminals. So uh, terminal two and three are inactive until terminal one's taken, then terminal two becomes active, and then when terminal two take is taken, terminal three gets active. Blue four has a large area to start from, but they're gonna be boxed in by this one bridge. So I wonder if Op4 might rush out and try to cover that bridge. Interesting, because the next bridge is right down there. So right off the bat, we see a choke point. Uh, Op4 could literally put the Vix right here ready to go and be there in 30 seconds and set something up. Blue4 uh, could probably set up right here, charge in, uh, but Op4 would still have like 10 to 15 seconds to set up AT. So interesting call there, but they could pretty much uh, box out those MRAPs because this river is actually pretty thick. So we'll see uh, looking in, but at least from memory served and on this map, um, it would be a bit difficult to get a uh, MRAP through that river. Yeah, so it, exactly. It's a rush-like battlefield, so I guess that's what rush attack means. But, I mean, these positions here, Terminal 1's got some good territory around it for defense. Uh, there's these big open fields, so I guess that's what Op4 was banking on for their mat team guy, but there is also a good bit of fog. The last Ruha fight also had a good bit of fog with it too, so... Interesting to see all of this come into play. So, let's look at the uh, river here, because that is my most concerning thing. Uh, before we get into anything else. Alright, it looks like the river is not as deep as I remembered, so... Screw bra uh, defending that bridge, then. Um, yeah, so I remember it being, you know, thicker like this part, but it looks like there are plenty of thin spots to go with it, so a lot of small places where they could cross with an MRAP. So holding that bridge then becomes a very dumb idea, but, uh, you know, it's something I thought. But there are still plenty of, uh, there are still plenty of thick spots on that, uh, river there, but I guess that's to keep uh, Op4 guessing on where the attack's going to come from, so that's going to keep Op4 a little more on the defensive side. They have four static cords to help them with fire superiority, uh, at least against the blue four Vix. <clears throat> yep, and um, let's see. So, blue four also has transport MRAPs. Which is probably why Op4 has the cords so they can pen them. That's interesting. I kind of like the fog. It helps kind of limit the firefight to be a shorter range. And in that, see how everything goes. Uh, how would I put it? The fog helps um, kind of, you know, limit the view distance of the players here. Also, it adds a little nice bit of ambience, because I'll be honest, I don't really play at, or post ops that have this level of ambience here, and it's given me some uh, interesting ideas, to say the least, but <clears throat> since most of the scopes are short range, because, you know, we see holo sites, we see CCOs, that sort of thing, uh, the engagements are then limited in range, but that also makes the uh, marksman slots that much more important. So fog kind of helps limit that uh, view distance. <clears throat> but, you know, to each their own. And my throat is starting to fight with me because I have apparently been talking too much. I guess because I don't have Barbarian to bounce stuff off of. But right off the bat, we have Nemesis running back. Got... Oh, Nemesis has taken the Marksman Rifle. Interesting. We'll see how well he plays that role. And we got all of these guys grouped up. And making their plan. We got about three different groups of people and then some loose guys. We have a CSAT dude here. That just means Tanky hasn't loaded in the server fully, so hasn't had his kit loaded. But let's look at these three AOs, and then we'll look at some possible blue four vectors to come in. So... AO1 has that terminal right smack dab in the middle. I always like hiding a dude back here. Uh, I've got a video clip of me killing four people just hiding back here with a machine gun. So you never know what Op4 might be able to pull with this. 
But, you know, this in itself is a pretty good defensive position, but it's also a pretty big target. But there are enterable buildings all around, so Op4 could pull a pretty decent perimeter security with this. And then, you know, we also have the Skyscraper right here, but it doesn't have that much cover. It would be better if the Mat Gunner or their Marksman were to stay up in the high point itself right here. But Nemesis was already pulling back. Let's look at area number two. Area number two is a little bit smaller. Uh, it appears to be in a barn. Uh, this is just a grenade trap. Plus, you can kind of look through these little wooden positions and whatnot. So... Uh, it's tough because there's limited cover here. Let me quickly look at uh, Op4's camo scheme. Op4 has some good camo for the terrain. That'll really help them out. What about Blue4? Blue 4 also having a dark woodland camo, uh, but theirs is a little bit more noticeably brighter compared to uh, Op 4. So Op 4 can possibly do some hiding around here, but I will admit out of all the terminal, uh, both the terminal positions, this one's definitely on the weaker end. I probably wouldn't even use that position as a commander because there's just so many open areas to kind of watch things from compared to position 1. And then position 3 way back here actually has some defensive aspects to it okay so they have nemesis running back to get some good recon we also have some good hills right here some good overwatch that can be done um so this can kind of limit the approaches of uh blue four and have them get covered but if op four were to put their units out at the right spots they'd be able to see any blue four guys coming but right here we see the roaming hills that ruha is really famous for uh, just because Blue 4 could easily sneak a group in and get right up to this terminal objective. I've been eyeing this little spot right here, and Op 4 doesn't really have that much cover right here to uh, see it coming. So, either way. Looking at Blue 4 strategy, though, if they have just the map to read, uh, they could go for the bridge or they could go for a super thin spot, like right here. Yeah, so if you want, if you read the map, you can see where it comes super thin. You could get these marked on side and then you could talk with your squad leaders on good places to go. But if I were Blue 4 hitting this first terminal, I would honestly... I would find a southern right place, so right here. I would cross the river right here. I would then put my units around on the left inmost edge, and I would take this forest area as an overwatch point, and then send my forces in through here. And the reason for that is you have all these massive open fields against a big building, uh, that you can see on the map. So you got to assume that this, you know, compared to all their buildings, this is something like a complex or, you know, like a, a refinery, you know, something where you can get on the rooftop of and look around. So you don't really want to be in these open areas, even though the fog is going to work to your advantage, because if you're spotted early on in a kill zone, you could easily get gunned down. But it is also important to note that these riverbeds exist and these could be used to get up on this position. But some are kill zones because they have really easy sight lines for this position to come in and fire on it. So, if I was Blue 4, I would put my main force over here and I'd probably put like a squad worth of dudes to come in on this riverbed right here. Because from there they can get to this forested area and then go uh, do the short range fight and win it. And then having a big force right here can cut off Op4 uh, from doing their pulling back. Now, if I was in Op4 shoes and I got eyes on all three of these sites, I would not do Terminal 2. I would put a trap on Terminal 2 uh, with explosives, and I would just hold Terminal 3 and Terminal 1. Again, limiting uh, the AOs I'm going to defend to make it easier on myself. But we'll see what both platoon commanders pull out with, and we'll see what happens with the fight. We still got seven minutes. What do you guys think? Throw me some curveballs here, because I would love to see some other strategies get played here. 
because the only two decent riverbed approaches are these right here. Everything else is pretty open. If Op4 can lock the kill zone down quick enough, uh, they can get the advantage here. But again, the forest to this area can let Blue 4, especially with those MRAPs, get close enough to uh, engage whatnot. But we have the... Um, the Matt team with the AT, and he does have his assistant. They are going to come around over here. I'll be curious to see where they set up as well for that overwatch. And I'll be curious to see what Blue 4 has uh, on their unit overwatch as well. But we already have uh, an MRAP ready to go here. Uh, this is the Matt team, because uh, Dingo's in it. So Op4, it looks like they're sending some guys to Terminal 2, checking that position out, seeing if it's defensible. Again, personally, I would not use Terminal 2. I would just keep it at Terminal 3. Because also, you got to consider the distance between Terminal 2 and Terminal 3. Uh, if you are able, um, as a defender, you either have to kill all the Blue 4 guys or stall it out for time. And stalling out for time is a better defensive uh, thing, in my opinion, because it means you're not trying to commit to counterattacks solely to uh, White Blue 4, who does have the number advantage. I don't know. We'll have to see. Let's look at some other routes here. I didn't really find any other good routes on uh, the map other than the riverbeds to come in on. But, you know, there's also plenty of other little uh, gaps here that uh, Blue 4 could get guys on. Uh, they're really hard to see on the map, though. They're, they're kind of these, like, solid lines here. So Blue 4, you know, they could get a group to come in any of these little um, lines right here because, you know, little empty river uh, ravines, riverbeds, whatever you want to call them. And they could also use that to get up close. But Op4 looks like they've uh, added some fortifications to this position. So they are definitely intending on holding it. And it looks like they are going to try to fortify Terminal 2 a bit. They brought the statics over here. I mean, they could probably build a good perimeter here. But at the same time, it's... It's really tough. There's also an open door right here that can be done for some really good overwatch. Maybe putting Nemesis up there wouldn't be a bad call. But they're actually building stuff all the way down here instead. I guess uh, trying to think they're going to use open vectors. But in reality, if I was blue for... I mean, this is screaming use me. You know, the forest to the forest. Good cover and concealment to move up on. It's just there is a little bit of a kill zone here, but again, little ravines that you can use, crawl up, and then you can set up right here and engage close, so... I don't know, I feel like two is a trap. On principle alone, I would say blue four. I, I put my starting bet on blue four. Just because of the numbers advantage and where we're seeing uh, op four set up, but... Strategy is one thing. It's still going to come down on who has the better PvP. And we have to admit here, we have the Scandi Recon guys here, though they did get countered by the Serbians last time. But again, Nemesis being a powerful player, as Marksman, I'll be curious to see what he does. And I remember last stop we had on Ruha, there was a lot of... It might have been Sham, but both are really similar in terrain. Uh, style at least. We'll have to see if, um, you know, there's some entire group wipes and whatnot, because that can make all the difference. But Hellborn, thanks for the 22 month resub. I hope you keep enjoying the operations, and I hope you get a kick out of this. But look at this, look at this. Blue Force sending some guys to the south, as I call. It looks like they're sending the ar uh, armed MRAPs, though. And they've also got them loaded with some additional players here. Interesting call. So we've got a northern force. 
Looks to be about two-thirds of their force here. And then the remaining third is spread out among these. So a lot of different teams are going to get moved in, which is interesting because they weren't really uh, set up that way. So it's not mat teams that are being maneuvered. It's actually just going to be a lot of different fire teams put in various positions. Ah, that is a good question. Where did Op4 set up those cords? I saw two of them brought back to Terminal 2. There's going to at least have to be one at Terminal 1, because this is a really great building to put it. Also... Ooh, that... That is a very... cheeky spot. Nope, he decided against it. Maybe he'll uh, put it up there? I guess because the blast would have been covered. I mean, that could take out this building. Yeah, he's gonna go for there. That's a lot more obvious, though. So they're gonna know it's there. Um, but while the terminal's hacking, it doesn't give a prompt. So they'll have to hack it and then quickly get out of it. But I think Op4 is going for a sacrifice play here. They're not gonna hold Terminal 1. But we do have some groups set up. They're going to possibly go for a counter attack right off the gate. Maybe this group is going to go up and try to secure that bridge. Interesting. So yeah, I would assume then that all four of the heavy statics were brought back. Matt team is on a hay bill back here trying to overwatch best they can. They're going to be hunting for those MRAPs. So you have Patriot looking down on the left. Victor on the right. Some people crashed. Uh, they are trying to come back in, but the mission started, so I don't think they'll be able to make it, which is unfortunate. But yeah, no, Op4 is making their stand in this position. They built up what they could, but I think that's going to bite them in the ass later. So we do see another cord set up right there. Yanni's on it. I saw another cord brought into here, but I don't know where it was brought in. But let's look at Blue4's deployment here. So Op4, they're going to go up and hold that bridge. Not surprised with that call at all. Um, it's an obvious thing. They don't know how wide the river is. I would have made the same mistake as an independent commander. Uh, but otherwise, Op4 also pushing up two guys over here. And the demo guy is uh, staying at this position. But yeah, no, these guys, they're pushing their guys to the south. And they're going to come around. Meanwhile, these guys... Coming out in the open and these guys dismounted before the bridge and they might try to hold here instead or they're remounting. I don't know. Yep, so they're going to remount. And Blue 4 doing a very far push uh, to the south, but independent predicting this, they're putting a vehicle over here, I guess, to see if they're going to do that southern push because with this AO, they hit the rock, but... Uh, with this AO, they don't know where Blue 4 is going to cross from, so if they can get intel on where Blue 4 is going to push their units, that'll really help Op4 out so they know where to set up their lines, at least for Terminal 2, but by then it might not be um, usable data. So Op4 has pushed up right here. The bridge is just right here, but instead they're going to they're gonna cross uh, the river without utilizing the bridge against smart but we do have harrison right here with at he's got eyes on beautiful rear hit oh and they're gonna dismount on the rear oh okay never mind another rpg comes in dingo going down this was their mat team yeah, so I guess Blue 4 was going to try to put their mat team on a different angle to get Overwatch here. But if Op 4 can secure that, they'll have all the AT to take out the enemy MRAPs. So Dingo's not dead officially. Harrison is pushing down here, though. Interesting. And now we have, real quick, these vehicles over here. Blue 4 completely missed this vehicle. But yeah, now they're going to know that they're coming from the south as well. Harrison now pushing up. He's not going to hear Saxus in there. I think Saxus is there to do medical. Grenade is thrown. Let's quickly hit the P key so we can see tracers. Another grenade getting thrown too.
Keep my eyes to the south. Vic's pulling up. This one's also pulling up. They might see each other. Uh, Blue Four has dismounted right here. Harrison! Oh my god. Saxis was the marksman. What just happened? Saxis is gonna drown at this point. He might drown quicker than Dingo, but he could still wake up. He didn't get double tapped. Can you change bets? And now Harrison's getting suppressed by his own guys. I mean, again, the fog is gonna make PID pretty tough. They're only shooting at movement here. So Harrison did get hit once. I would totally loot Saxis for that uh, marksman rifle. But yeah, two blue four guys knocked out. Um, Lucid here doing a really good job. He is the mat guy. He wants to keep that out of Op 4's possession. Harrison's now gonna run up, uh, probably double tap Dingo, and that will make Dingo first blood. There it is. I feel bad for Dingo. Dingo was telling me before uh, EU branch started today that he was going to show me that Scandi Recon had something to fear, and uh, Dingo just got double tapped. <laughs> Uh, hopefully he'll join us on stream though and again we're gonna stick around for uh na's friday night fights and go from there but meanwhile blue four have set some dudes up there is an op four vehicle right behind them oh these guys have to hear it what is this What just happened? Gunner just died. They're shooting on the rear. Did they not hear that coming up? Looking back, looks like Sazra drowned. Lucid's still up. These guys are basically being a mobile. Uh, they're being a maneuver team, getting behind blue four units and killing them. I cannot believe that worked. A gaz is clearly distinguishable in audio via an MRAT, so these guys have to be new to armor or something, or they just don't play with RHS, but the gaz has that whine that makes it a lot different from an MRAP. But we have another MRAP crew coming up. Oh my god. You're kidding me. I don't know. I I don't know what to say. Nemesis he's gone on the wide north flank. Uh, Luso is going to have a lot of time walking back. We have a strike team coming up the riverbank, as I predicted. Matt uh, just fired. Javelin round coming in. Hits that MRAP. Kills Bob because he was in the building. He might be able to wake back up, though. Dean was in that Vic, too. He's going to dismount. Explosive charge goes off on the roof. Try to hit NASA and Hippie. That was uh, Gork staying under here, trying to hear them out. And we're also having Blue Force main force now in the southern forest. Coming up, they're firing at this MRAP. So, I I predicted pretty much what Blue Four was gonna do in this situation, but Blue Four is getting harassed by Op Four, and it's working. I cannot believe it's work. Like, wow. So again, I I said originally I thought Blue Four was gonna win this uh, based off of tactics, but yeah, again, it's down to the PVP. All the cheeky plays people do stack up on top of each other and it'll eventually you know it'll stack up explosive charge going down Gork somehow surviving prone and killing hippie and nasa arcor comes up what the fuck was that so nasa and hippie might be able to get saved but Now we're having a blue four Vic shoot up by Arcor. 
Smoke grenade gets popped. Hippie wakes back up. They're going to have to medic Nass up. So Gork unfortunately going down in vain, but that was a really good trick play. <laughs> Off for setting up a force right here. Blue four might run into him. Um, Lucio got picked up because he's still to work in radio. Boston swung back and grabbed him, so they still have that mat gun. Nemesis setting up on the northern side, watching for anything to come around. And we still have these small hunter-killer teams. This one's a group of four. And that other team of two has dismounted, and they're checking back here. Bob was able to wake back up. I mean, this is good stalling. This is very, very good stalling. And now uh, we have dudes firing up into the smoke here. Terminal 1 has been hacked. And you're seeing that MRAP firing back. Really go good keyholing right there. Actually knocking Wheat and Firefighter out by damaging this building. And they might be able to get the double tap on Wheaton because he is exposed. Expanky getting some shots on Winchester here. Dean's turned around. He knows something's up. And we have more Op4 guys being deployed now. Uh, meanwhile, this riverbed group is going to probably continue on this MSR. Probably um, take it all the way down. This is the MSR technically for this AO. Uh, and the SSRs are the dirt roads. Yeah, they just so they just double tapped uh, Bob. And again, these two, they sniped a gunner out of an MRAP and they killed uh, Bob there. And this MRAP got taken out uh, by the Matt team gun, but uh, the gunner was already dead because of what these two crazy chads did. So meanwhile, uh, Boston has driven back. Uh, he is uh, back behind the river. He does have um, Lufo with him, who does have the Matt gun. And the main blue four force is coming up. Hack one's been completed. These guys need to clear the area because that's going to explode. Oh dear. If you saw the little, um, the GBU spawned on top of it and then it causes, uh, makes a hide command come up for that terminal because the terminal isn't, uh, doesn't have a destroy texture. So just a little bit of nice scripting with a nice little audio click too. And now we're having Op4 firing over at this MRAP. Was there a guy in it? Yep, they shot the gunner out of that one too. Wow. So Platoon HQ is coming out in the open. I wonder if anyone's watching their rears here. They don't have any AT to deal with that Vic though. And it's really hard to hear its audio, but I mean, maybe they spotted the gas. Who knows? But wow, oh wow. We have Op 4 coming up. Uh, and then Op 4 is now contesting with some of the Blue 4 forces here. RPG went in and hit the third MRAP. That is all of Blue 4 MRAPs pretty much locked down. There's still one they could pull a body out of, but really good job. And I think um, Op 4 still has a single MAT team missile left from the assistant. Now we have Op 4 bringing forces around. Uh, might stay north of this waterway though. I would have wanted to see a few guys come around like this and flank them from the rear, but they're going to form a battle line right here. We're going to have this force uh, start having some real action here between two large groups of players. So meanwhile, looking back, um, Boston's pulled into where McSpanky and Slayer are. I don't think either have noticed yet. But yeah, that's that's their. Oh my gosh. This MRAP's still locked down. These three guys pulled into this vehicle. Um, but it looks like they're, they didn't notice and they're going to pull into that area. It's honestly, the rain is so, listen to this rain. It's pretty hard to hear those vehicles over the rain. Can't you agree? So that's why they didn't aggro on them. Meanwhile, Corporal Firefighter pushing across. We're seeing Patriot and Victor pulling around that flank like I thought we'd see. And we do have some guys, I guess, just lost back here. Um, Nutmeg, I think, is a squad leader here, trying to coordinate his forces from the rear. And we're having Op4 and Blue4 pushing up within 10 meters of each other. Uh, Montgomery's friend right here just went down. Uh, oh gosh, Montgomery's unconscious glitched.
So this, uh, this sometimes happens to people's cameras. Uh, that can give him a very significant advantage, though, because uh, he could be standing up, but he might appear prone on him. But I think Alexander's still contesting with him, manages to get the shot. Meanwhile, Dooley gets a shot on, I don't even want to pronounce that, Bo, uh, Bono. Bo, I, I, I don't know. But they're, they're firing back, the Serbs are. Bo gets shot, though, by Dooley. And if Dooley were to get up, he could spot Worm here, too. But, yeah, a lot of blue four guys are going down here. Dooley now firing across, trying to get... I don't know what he's trying to get, actually. I, oh, okay, I think he was shooting at one of the bodies here. Just make sure they're double-tapped. Worm trying to crawl away there, uh, but you said his name was Sliver or something. I don't know. I'm bad with Russian text. But, uh, up four. Lost one of their guys. Uh, Cleric's up here. He is firing at Patriot here. Uh, he gets caught in the open. He is the Matt guy with the thermoscope. Doesn't really have too much good cover to hide behind. And Cleric is now also firing at Victor here. Firefighter's gonna push his position, though. And... Firefighter gets the drop. Oh, man. So looking back here, uh, looks like they're all remounting into Vix. Op4 lost their advantage here, but they'll be able to remount and uh, re-attack. Nemesis, meanwhile, getting on a good flank. He's on this building. I don't think he notices the Delta teams over here, but he could get a few good marksman shots if he is uh, alert. And Blue Force's southern attack with the main force has pretty much been thwarted here. Firefighter going down to Hazard, who was on rear security, getting double tapped. That is unfortunate. Uh, Victor is down. Patriot doing his best to medic him up. Hoyt is still up here too. One of the Delta Team machine gunners. Uh, so I take that back. I thought Up4 had their units a bit closer. But Dooley, who was up here, he's pulled back. And Sliver here is still also coming back. Dingo! Dingo's here! Dingo, you were first blood. I'm so sorry. It just wasn't meant to be. C'est la vie. Oh, wait, hold up. We have um, Op4 grabbing these gases here. Uh, maybe they'll drive back and pick up these other two. Yeah, they're part of the same squad. So, yeah, Charlie was just a dedicated mobility team to go behind Blue4 and get some licks in, and they got those licks in. Nemesis, meanwhile, he's over here. Oh, he hears that MRAP. And he is actually sighting the platoon HQ MRAP. He should know that his uh, bullets aren't going to be able to pen that glass, but if they dismount, uh, that'll be a good clue on where Blue 4 is hiding. Meanwhile, Hoyt is swimming back. If Worm looks left, he might be able to catch Hoyt out of position here. And he just might do that. Uh, Patriot might have just seen him, though. Grenadier round goes up by Nutmeg there. That's going to cause Op4 to scatter. Next shot was low, unfortunately. And that one was just right, but these guys repositioned. Ooh, really nasty shot on Hoyt there. He doesn't know where he is. He's just getting cover instead. Now we have Worm also set up. Looking back, Nemesis still sighting that position. These guys getting in some vehicles. They're going to focus on bandaging. Worm, I don't think, has an angle here to see him. But now Nutmeg and Worm are going to reposition. I know I keep calling Worm a sliver. I just, I'm working with what I got. Hazard firing a shot at Patriot. And Op4, they've pulled all their units back and have gone on Terminal 2 instead. We still have Charlie back there. They've consulted. Nope, there's uh, two Vicks out still. Nemesis trying to get an angle on those guys. And Hoyt, he has his gun up, so he's giving away his own position. That's just a glitch if you get too close to the rock while you're prone and your gun's too long. Uh, it makes the gun go up in the air. But Worm is now sneaking over. Uh, I don't think either of these guys spotted Worm. They just know Nutmeg is... Uh, someone over there is shooting grenadier rounds at him. They're also pulling this uh, smoking MRAP at. It is still usable, and I believe that other MRAP was still taken and is being utilized. So they're trying their best to use their assets. Worm is now sneaking up. Suppressive fire going down on Hoyt here. And Hoyt getting shot in the leg by Worm. I know it's not Worm. If one of you wants to remind me, I, can, I think it's Sliver. I could be wrong, though. But Charlie is now pushing guys around. They might try to hit Blue Force main force on the rear. And Nemesis still waiting this out. 
Oh, he is. He's watching these guys like a hawk. But if he were to get one or two good hits, identify Boston right here. Oh, he takes a shot. Hits Stray Dog, but Stray Dog is still alive. And that's going to make these guys all scatter. So I'm running into the MRAP for defense. Uh, and we have Worm still moving up here. Show me. It's show me. You're right. Why did I think it was Sliver? I'm so bad, guys. I'm sorry. Patriot doing his best to hold back. Sliver here. Slivering around. Show me. No, it's show me. God damn. I'm so bad with names. But show me uh, coming up. He's got some good shots on Patriot. Patriot sees show me and show me goes down. Patriot probably pulled out of his snow, uh, scope, saw him uh, expose himself. Uh, a little bit of a skyline right there with that white background of the reeds and the contrast. It's a little yellowish, but I don't see Hoyt. Uh, show me might wake back up. And we also have this M2 now suppressing Patriot's position. It's firing a little high, though. And Patriot taking a shot from Hazard. Patriot firing back. Hazard, uh, Patriot rolling back, but now he's more exposed to that MRAP. And Shomi's woken back up, so he could do a wide flank. So Nemesis is pulled back. This MRAC pulled around there looking for him. But Nemesis, he will have the audio PID of those vehicles. And now we have Charlie. Oh, God, Charlie has pulled back. Got a really good Grenadier hit. Managed to knock Gopher out. Another one coming up on that MRAC. Knocks out his... <laughs> I'm going to call him Rador. <laughs> Here is Rador. Skater Boy, the only one up. Uh, XPSB member, also plays in TMTM. Um, we might see these two wake back up. Now he is getting shot at. Blind fires behind him to try to buy himself some time. Pops some smoke grenades as well. And uh, that smoke grenade didn't get registered on me, but he's going to quickly get behind this rock. And he's got a lot of Charlie guys to contend with. And he gets knocked out. As Harrison is also coming in, Skater Boy gets double tapped. Um, here is Woken back up. Harrison could run down, get the double tap on him as well. But Patriot looks like he went down, possibly by Show Me or by Blue Four going up in there. Harrison tries to get some double taps here. Here is Rodor trying to get some shots back as well. I don't see Golfer waking back up. Oh, grenades bouncing back around. Harrison getting the shots here. Uh, Harrison took Blue Four's um, marksman rifle. So he was part of the original group that went up on the river here. Just to quickly take us out of the action. That would mean that this one body here. Yep, he changed the gun and AT out. So he's putting that marksman rifle to work. And he manages to knock him out once again. All right, getting myself set back up right here. And those are the executions gone on. And I'd be curious to see if that MRAF's still usable. Pierce is getting in it, trying to see if the engine was still working. I don't think those Grenadier rounds would have damaged the engine. So that is a possibility to commandeer that MRAP. Show me, meanwhile, is one with the shadows, maneuvering around, got the double tap on Patriot, might go up and double tap Victor. But at that point, that entire Blue Four attack has been nullified. And that, in my opinion, is crazy. Nemesis now running up to previous Blue Force position. He's going to try to keep being sneaky. Maybe come up to this riverbed, hit them on the rear. Maybe steal an MRAP, run people over. You never know. But his top priority should be knocking out that Blue Four MRAP. Oh, what is this? Azus on his own. What is Azus a part of? Azus is uh, part of Charlie. He's just coming up here to check things out. He gets caught out of position, though, forced to walk back up because of that steep uh, incline. Show me missing his opportunity to get the kill here. That's going to knock Azus down. Azus is also the medic, I think, trying to get up to Victor to medic him. But now Show me is going to come up. Azus deciding to medical instead. He needs to be shouting on the radio to say to his buddies that he is under fire. His buddies are responding, and they got a marksman shot on Worm with that stolen marksman rifle. I believe that was Harrison's work. And yeah, that stolen marksman rifle. We don't see it a lot, but I have shown it time and time again. When people in FNF steal the enemy's equipment, their marksman rifles or their um, uh, mat rifle, uh, the mat guns, which is the heavy AT, it can work wonders. 
And in this case, Op4 is stealing that marksman rifle and all of his ammo because he was pretty much fresh. It's it's pulling favors for Char um, Charlie's team. Uh, as Op4, you know, still has a pretty big number advantage now. Blue 4 getting pretty much wiped. Uh, Show me, aka Worm, aka Mr. I can't pronounce his name. Not waking back up. Azu still might be able to get up to Victor's position. I don't know if they can track each other, though. And we just had someone go down over here. That would be Hippie as the marksman. Might have been Nemesis, but I don't think so. Yep, so basically last of Blue Force units are over here. Azu's probably going to come up and double tap show me. And instead goes right by him, but uh, show me is going to bleed out. He might find Victor, though, because Victor got stabilized. Maybe they have a map marker and they're going to go check it out. So one more op four guy is going to be pretty helpful here. Nemesis does have rounds going over his head. He might have seen some of the Delta guys up here. Again, a headshot on the back of the head of one of these guys would make a very big difference uh, as they slowly cut down Blue Four's guys. I mean, if um, Nemesis were to kill like the Matt Gunner, for example, um, that would deny Blue Four a uh, missile strike on this Op Four position. I don't know how, but this position is good. Like, it's being used for the forest back here. I I wouldn't have predicted something like that, to be honest. But, you know, here it is. It's like it's scripted, man. I don't get it. But Nemesis is staying low. Oh, how did they not see him when they came up on that turn? I guess just with that angle of vision, he didn't see Nemesis out in the open. But yeah, Nemesis now has a target. Oh no, they totally, they totally spotted Nemesis because Boston came back. Oh! <laughs> and Nemesis snipes Platoon Commands. <laughs> that was the, that was the, honestly the best person he could have killed out of everybody. Because Nemesis being the head of the snake, head of the snake's chopped off. And now these guys are going to have to be left to their own devices to coordinate. But they are a small enough force now that that might not matter. Meanwhile, I think, yep, Azus found Victor. I'm willing to bet he was marked on map as um, a guy that was uh, stabilized. So they might be able to get Victor back in the fight now because Azus is a medic. Meanwhile, Charlie now pushing up the southern flank might come up this forested path over here and flank Blue Four. But I cannot believe it. Nemesis delivering a really good kill there. I mean, Boston knew he was there. He was sighting it, but just kept himself fixated for too long instead of maneuvering. What Boston should have done was just maneuvered. Um, knowing he was down there, should have gone uh, up on these haystacks, came around, and then looked through the rear uh, while trying to keep away so his footsteps wouldn't be heard. But the rain would have done a good job covering it. So now you just have blue four uh, and op four positions contesting with each other. We do have a op four KIA right here, and I don't see that cord anymore. But either way, uh, op four I think is gonna win this. Uh, if they just keep this flank going strong, and they have uh, op four's Charlie team come up and uh, deliver a flank right here, it should be a okay. But blue four trying to push their advantage here. We have an MRAP coming out in the open. Um, maneuvering behind some building, which is a good call. And then we have Mountain also coming up, providing security right here. Maybe make, uh, thinking Op4 might make a uh, push. But yeah, now Nemesis, he's come up. He might, he's going to steal their radio. Um, no, he took a Blue 4 gun. Oh, that's cheeky. Now, if Blue 4 hears shots behind them, but it sounds like a standard 5.56 rifle, they're not going to bat an eye. So Nemesis now going to play it a lot tougher here. But he has to go for headshots. He has to make sure that his jig doesn't get put up. Because once Blue 4 realizes that they're getting attacked by their own guns, they'll start double-checking all audio PID. But very smart play on Nemesis. I've only seen this done one other time. And in that other time when it was done, one guy was able to wipe five dudes before he was blue on blue by his own guy.
So Nemesis now poking his head up. Playing it cautious. He doesn't know where Blue 4 is, but he's right next to him. So he heard that. He had to have heard that launcher. He's staying in the low ground too, so he doesn't skyline. He's gonna get a headshot on Dean. There goes Dean. Indigo coming around, sees Dean is dead, so he knows something's up. Oh, see, but Indigo didn't bat an eye because it was Blue 4. Uh, it was his own gun audio, so he's going to go hunting now. Nemesis, meanwhile, flanking around, trying to check that spot out again. But yeah, Nemesis, I mean, he's a T3 in TSB for a reason. He's a very good player, and he's very ingenuitive. So, again, good kill on Dean there as this main fight continues. And we're seeing Blue 4 push up. Honestly, they should load people up in that Vic and push in. Because uh, this is going to possibly... This is just drawing too much attention away. But this is just a massive kill zone for Blue 4 to cross. And even after they follow the riverbed up here, then what? Like, maybe they can move up here... But that, I would expect that to be locked down. So Nemesis, he's hearing those gunshots. And he's going to start trying to hunt down Indigo. Op 4 is winning, Dingo. And Harrison has also joined in. He also has the Blue 4 Marksman Rifle. <laughs> and he's taking shots at Indigo. Indigo has nowhere to go. And he gets a one-tap headshot. Oh, that's beautiful. Nemesis, though, he, I don't think he knows that Op4 took the Marksman rifle. So he's going to now do a wide flank, try to find that Marksman. Hopefully he doesn't blue on blue his own teammate there. But yeah, Blue4 has been now forced to uh, go on the northern flank here. We still have Stray Dog crawling up. But yeah, I mean, classic Blue 4. Uh, steal the enemy's guns, confuse their audio PID. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. His heart rate IRL is 150 beats per minute. Yeah, Nemesis is in the zone. He throws a grenade out. Oh, these two are confusing each other. See, friendly wiggle, friendly wiggle. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> oh, my God. Friendly wiggle for the win. They've stolen two blue four guns. That's absolutely amazing. I don't know. We have Logan in the NA ops, and now we have Nemesis in the EU ops. Him and Harrison have done wonders today. Harrison being in so many different firefights, taking the marksman gun. And again, it shows the advantage of if you can take the enemy's marksman rifle early on, you can really win this out. But meanwhile, MRAP is still driving around, drawing fire, trying to distract Op4 of this Blue 4 advance that's going to come in the riverbed. But Yanni is predicting something. He's going to try to get on this riverbed. He knows something's up. And we'll see how that goes. I mean, in Yanni's shoes, yeah, no, I would be on the rear. We also have Drake back here watching security on the left. They know that Blue 4 is trying something. But we have Mountain. He might be rushing to Terminal 3. Maybe thinking if Blue 4 can just get their hands on that terminal for a little bit, then they could just have one guy go over and take Terminal 3 and clutch it. But at the same time, Yanni running down on his own. He's looking out. He knows something's up because he probably is heard by Nemesis. Uh, and Harrison, that this is all pretty much cleared. So where did Blue 4 go? Oh, Yanni's got to be careful. He's got pretty much Blue 4's remaining strike team coming in. It's six dudes, but, you know, four are coming down here. One's off to the right. One's off to the left. And I've completely lost track of that MRAP. Stray Dog is putting some Grenadier rounds in here. Uh, it looks like they shot the gunner out of this MRAP, but the driver is still alive. Yanni, meanwhile, pulling back, probably hearing reports of that MRAP coming in, so these guys are trying to reposition. Uh, I think that was done as a feint, but in my opinion, they shouldn't have uh, put the gunner in an exposed position. They should have just hit, uh, hit him in the Vic itself.
All right, so this four-man strike team's coming in. I mean, the numbers are against them. They have Charlie back here in an MRAP. What are they doing? Do they not see that that's an Op4 guy? That's... That's your teammate. The teammate. They get an they get a scroll wheel option to enter it. Why are, why is he shooting his own dude? I mean, I don't see a wounded mark here, but What are you doing? All right, meanwhile, Blue Force made their maneuver here. Uh, uh, MG Hockey is uh, setting up his machine gun. Might get pl uh, catch Pled out of position here. Meanwhile, we have Harrison and Nemesis back here. Nemesis, he's gone back, grabbed his STV because he knows this is more open ground for him to utilize. Grenade goes off, uh, takes Plet out. And Harrison might walk on top of Stray Dog or vice versa. Mountain also looping around with that MG gun. Grenades being traded in positions. And we just heard the ma- Oh! Decent use of the missile. Trying to use it to kill the people behind here. But unfortunately, it doesn't do too well. Um, someone just got gunned down. Nope. Never mind. Op4 got gunned down because there's only four dudes right here. I thought he killed somebody. But Hippie was actually pulled back further. So... Decent use of that mat gun. Good idea. Nice concepts. Uh, but it ends up being Olaf from FK getting that one kill. Severe, meanwhile, right here, staying in the low ground, locking this down. He also has a grenadier weapon with that GP25 under his gun. And I think he's waiting for someone to come around. Secondary cook-off explosion goes off. Flying fin still up. Harrison, meanwhile, has no idea Stray Dog is just to his right bandaging. Don't know what clipped him. And we have Mountain still coming around here. So, Drake putting a Grenadier round really close, gets it on Olaf's position. I thought it hit Severe for a second. And he puts a few rounds down, trying to hit NASA. High round grenade goes up perfectly on NASA's position, bounces a little back, some more shrapnel damage. Uh, both of these guys are pretty badly wounded, but still, they have all their dudes up. NASA also spraying into Olaf, and Olaf has no choice but to turn around and hit him. And then Severe gets hit. Or Severe hits Olaf. Four dudes are left, and they still had a miscommunication, and NASA wounded Olaf. Ugh, that's a mess. Shows you communication is key to this. Hippie, meanwhile, going out in an open field, gets shot dead. Severe double tapping NASA to make sure he's down. Stray Dog going down. I think he. Yep, he pushed out on the left, ran into Harrison, and was taken out. Um. Plett is the only guy alive from this flank. Severe going on the left side, though. Trying to clear his left, make sure there's no one over there. Mountain is running down this riverbed, though, but he's not going to make it in time. Hippie, meanwhile, waking back up. Severe bandaging. And we're seeing Drake putting some shots out on Hippie to try to knock him out. Hippie has no choice. Popping some smoke grenades and trying to roll away. Very nasty position to be in. Uh, Nemesis, meanwhile, still being slow to the punch here. I don't think he'll be able to get anything. Severe taking out Plet. Drake shooting at Severe because of a miss PID. No, I think um, Drake was shooting past Severe. Manages to knock Hippie out. And now Mountain is the last man standing. Unless there was a guy still up in that blue 4 MRAP back here. Because I saw it move on. But I don't see a player, so... I don't know. Uh, because I have that guy dead in the gunner seat, I don't have it on my interface, but we can quickly check here. Hippie is bleeding. Um, nope, he is dead. So Mountain is the only one still alive. So, guys, can Mountain clutch it? Nope. Harrison already spots Mountain. Severe getting shot in the ass by Mountain because he does have... That is a 240, so that's the most powerful machine gun. Just double tapped his friend. And now, Drake getting some shots, and there goes Blue 4. And that's the game. Hippie's not going to wake back up, because Hippie, uh, 
already got knocked unconscious and woke back up and took more lead. Harrison was in that Vic. He's now coming down. Might notice Severe is... Oh my gosh, okay. That... That was worrisome. Yeah, they're double tapping the bodies because I don't think they realize Hippie is the one that is still alive, but... <sighs> if I were to say what the biggest importance was... Yep, there it is. Hippie just got shot by um, something. Blue 4 eliminated. But I think the biggest importance here was Charlie team for Op 4 getting behind Blue 4 positions and taking them out. Uh, either harassment on gunners of MRAPs, or we saw them go behind the forest over here and sweep the rest of the Blue 4 southern push, which was the main force in the beginning. And uh, also, uh, they took out the marksman and stole his rifle and then used that to pretty much seal the deal. Uh, and then, you know, Nemesis had some good plays there as well. But wow, wow, oh wow. We never got it, and that's why the MRAP was able to push us because we never got the. Uh, because our court got armored. Oh, the core yeah, got armor. That's sure why they weren't able to deal with the MRAP. That weapon over to you. Yeah, well, either way, Sc Scandi Recon's uh, <laughs> fucking nemesis went up behind all of them and probably. Aye, aye, aye. Is there a way to check how many kills you got? Yeah, uh, not anymore. Not anymore, went no. Too, went out too quick. So thank you, uh, thank everyone for coming tonight. We've uh, we've dramatically over won, and F and F N A is in just. All right, so as Dingo was saying right there, at least I think it was Dingo, it might have been uh, Fox, Indigo Fox, but we have another batch of Friday Night Fight. The NA branch, which I normally cover, will be on in an hour and 50 minutes. So, if you want to come join me for three more rounds of PvP, I got to go take a lozenger so my throat doesn't get screwed, but we're going to have more people like Azariah, maybe Nimia, Iceberg said he's also showing up. Maybe What's That will even grace us with his presence. Uh, but I doubt it. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I, I just know right off the bat. I can try though, What's That, go fuck yourself. <laughs> God, come on, what's that? I know you could I know you could come on as a tier five and wipe everybody. I know. We had to contain your power. But anyway, thank you so much for watching uh the EU branch of Friday Night Fights. Again, NA will be in about an hour, hour and ten minutes, give or take. Uh hope to catch you for that. But otherwise, cheers guys. Have a good one. Go operate operationally, and hopefully I'll see you in an hour.